Let's follow the following steps to write down the Lewis structure for water, methane and carbon dioxide. Let's start from the first one, water. According to this procedure, we are first going to write the correct skeletal structure. What it means is how we're going to arrange the two hydrogens and the oxygen in the molecule. So here are some rules here. First, we're saying that the hydrogen are going to be on a terminal position. What it means is that we cannot have a hydrogen in the middle of the two atoms because hydrogens can only make one bond. So this wouldn't be proper. We're going to have something like this, oxygen connected with one hydrogen. But what we also have here says that the atoms with higher bond capacity go in the middle. So higher bond capacity means that how many more bonds or how many bonds the element is going to make to satisfy the octet rule. And the oxygen can make two bonds to satisfy the octet rule and that's why it's going to be in the middle. So the only option here is to put the other hydrogen on this side, on this terminal position as well. So this is step one. We've gotten the correct skeletal structure for the water. Second step says that we need to sum the valence electrons of all the atoms. So valence electrons can be easily determined based on the periodic table. The group number tells us how many valence electrons the element has. So for the oxygen is group 6, which means that oxygen has 6 electrons and hydrogens have 1 electron. And we have 2 hydrogens, so we have 2 electrons coming from the hydrogens. So of course they have to be connected, and to connect them we need to use two electrons. So I'm going to connect one hydrogen with the oxygen and then the other hydrogen with the oxygen as well. So we have used four electrons here to make the bonds. Next what we're going to do is we're going to count how many electrons actually we had in total. So here we have six, one, one and in total we have eight electrons. Now at this step we're going to count how many electrons we have used. Two bonds so we have used four electrons. So minus four electrons which means that we still have four electrons and these electrons are going to be placed around the more electronegative atom to make the octet for it. Now if we put two lone pairs of electrons on the oxygen we can count that it has eight electrons so oxygen has an octet and this will be the proper Lewis structure for the molecule. This can also be represented with the line so the bonds can be represented with the line H and we're still going to put these electrons here. These electrons that do not make a bond this lone pair and this lone pair called non-bonding electrons or lone pairs of electrons while these two that we have used to make the bond are called bonding electrons and this will be the correct Lewis structure of the water. Now let's go to the second molecule. Let's write down what we have for the CH4. So carbon here is going to be in the middle again because hydrogens go to the terminal position. We have four hydrogens and each hydrogen in order to make a bond with the carbon is going to use two electrons. So two electrons here and then for this hydrogen we have also for this hydrogen and the fourth one. Total number of the electrons that we have here is for the carbon we have four electrons because it's group four and for the hydrogen we have four of them so four times one we have four electrons coming from the hydrogen and the total number of the electrons is 8. Now what we're going to check is check how many electrons we have used. We made 1, 2, 3, 4 bonds and each bond is taking 2 electrons. So we had 8 and we used 8 electrons. We don't have any more electrons left. Which means that this is the Lewis structure of the methane. And also carbon has an octet here which is what it needs to follow. Now let's go to the next example. So carbon dioxide. Carbon is going to be in the middle here. Because according to this rule here, we're saying that the more electronegative element goes in a terminal position. And oxygen is more electronegative, so we're going to put them on the sides from the carbon. And this is in the middle. It's also because carbon has a higher bond capacity. What it means is that carbon needs to make four bonds in order to satisfy the octet rule. But we can use any of these two to actually put the oxygens on the right position. Now we have the skeletal structure. Let's sum the valence electrons. Carbon four electrons and oxygen, six electrons, and we have two oxygens, so we have 12 electrons here, and in total we have 16 electrons from the carbon and the oxygen. Now they have to be connected, so in order to connect them, we can also show it by the dots, the electrons are shown as dots, so put this here, now we made a bond between the carbon and the oxygen. When we did this, we have used four electrons. So we're going to subtract here, minus four electrons, and we have 12 electrons left. 
Let's see what we do with these 12 electrons. So here it says that arrange them in order to satisfy the octet rule for more electronegative element first, which means that we're going to put these electrons on the oxygens, not on the carbon. So 12 electrons are going to be distributed on two oxygens. And so what we have is the bonds and put the oxygens six electron on each oxygen so six here and then also six electrons on the second oxygen now this can also be represented with the lines what i mean is the bonds can be shown with the lines and this makes it sometimes easier to actually see what is happening so carbon and we have oxygen and here we can put the lone pairs of electrons so we have six electrons and six electrons here and now we have used all the electrons so now what we're going to do is we're going to check for the octet rule what about the carbon these oxygens yes they have eight electrons they satisfy the octet rule but the carbon has two bonds and each bond is made with two electrons so what we have here is that the carbon has four electrons so we're going to put four here and also one thing to mention here that the bonding electrons belong to both elements. They belong to carbon and the oxygen. So if we count number of the oxygen, number of the electrons on the oxygen, we circle everything that surrounds the oxygen. And that's why we have eight and we have eight here. And so this is essentially the octet rule. What it says that some elements tend to have eight electrons around them. So they tend to adopt an electron configuration of the noble gas. There's many exceptions to the octet rule, but at least for the first row of the element, excluding the metals and the boron, they usually follow the octet rule. 8, 8, and 4. What we need to do here, it says if any atom lacks an octet, and of course this should be an atom that follows the octet rule, and carbon definitely is an atom that tries to follow the octet rule. In most of the molecules, it's going to be an octet. So it has only four electrons. What it means is that we need to give, we need to share some of these electrons of the oxygen with the carbon. So if I bring two electrons from the oxygen to the carbon, and if I draw the resulting structure here, what I will have is that the carbon gets bonded to this oxygen, but now it has a double bond with this oxygen, and the oxygen has only two lone pairs now. Now the carbon has one, two, three bonds, which means that these are six electrons, right? So if we represent this by the dots, we'll have oxygen, and then these are the electrons that make the double bond. So if we circle everything that is around the carbon, it's so these electrons, and that's why these are six. So this is still not an octet. That means that what we're going to do is we're going to take another lone pair from here, and share with the carbon now from this oxygen and at this time the structure is going to look like this. So carbon now is going to have a double bond and also a double bond here and it's going to have the lone pairs of electrons and now if we count how many electrons we have around the carbon we have four electrons here, four electrons here, these are the double bonds and these are the oxygens with two lone pairs of electrons. And now if I count how many electrons I have around the carbon, it has eight. So it goes with the octet rule now, and that is what we want to have. Same, the oxygen has eight electrons, and this oxygen as well has eight electrons. So all the elements now have eight electrons. And this is the last step that you're going to do for drawing the Lewis structure. We're going to make sure that all the elements have the octet rule by making a double or a triple bond.